when do you think we're going to be able to we got an opportunity around 10k um i i had bid set all the way down to ninety five hundred dollars hello everyone today our guests are popular crypto bitcoin youtubers crypto wendy and debate crypto who dives deep into the sec and ripple battle and discuss various options and outcomes as the legal battle between Ripple Labs and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission continues to await a ruling from Judge Annalisa Torres of the United States Southern District Court of New York, Ripple's chief legal officer has spoken out with a striking statement on Twitter. The belligerent statement comes at a time when the SEC is conducting a supposed Operation Choke Point 2.0 against the crypto industry and also faces the first day of trial in two weeks in the litigation over a Bitcoin spot ETF with Grayscale. Ripple's Stuart Alderodi stated that the SEC has lost a total of four of the five cases that made it to the Supreme Court. The SEC has lost four of its last five cases in the Supreme Court, thanks to the few that had the courage and resources to fight back against the SEC's bullying and clinging to stretch legal positions that were not faithful to the law. Ripple versus the SEC court case update as of February 24, 2023. Oh my, and it has to do with the Hinman speech. It has to do with the Hinman speech. So let's go ahead and I'm going to read to you guys some of the notes that we have. Shout out to Mixing for giving that to us, um, but let's talk about it. In the latest update, U.S. government watchdog and power oversight announced the support of the recent motion filed by Forbes journalist Rosalind Layton to unseal the Hinman documents. If you guys don't know what the Hinman documents are, it's basically a doc, an email from Hinman that kind of was giving an opinion about XRP, and they want to use that in the court case. But they're saying that they can't use that in the court case, which is very, very convenient. Layton filed a motion before Judge Torres to gain access to the SEC documents on the ground that the info is of public interest. And I do believe that it is in public interest. It's important to note these guys' thought process because their thought process is how they create laws and regulations to give us guidelines on what we can and can't do in the crypto industry. So this is very important stuff. Empower is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that works to improve dependent oversight of government and corporate misconduct. Goal is to help insiders document and report corruption to the appropriate authorities. Um, the oversight or the Empower Oversight president said the SEC has consistently stonewalled any attempts from public interest transparency organizations to shine a light on conflicts, interest, and ethical questions at the agency. The public deserves answers from the regulators as to what exactly the agency knew about Hinman's speech and when they knew it. I'm not going to get into it too much terribly more because it's just annoying at this point, but I need to get all of your guys' take on what's happening because the SEC has overstepped their bounds and the way that our government works, I know Keeper can probably talk about this a little bit more, but the SEC has overstepped their bounds and we as the people can call in Congress to step in and say, hey, you can't do this. And again, I am for fair law and regulation, but what the SEC is doing is going after harmless crypto companies like what they did with Library and some of these other small startups. It's absolutely ridiculous and it's predatory and I don't like it. You said it you you said it correct, uh Wendy. At the end of the day, the the SEC is is acting as a predator right now. And I think it it looks to me as if the government is is using them as their little watchdog to make sure that they have time to position themselves to make the best situation out of what is the crypto space. So it feels like, OK, we know we need regulation. The government is late to the game. How do we slow things down? How do we position ourselves in conjunction with the banks that we want to make money? All of the basically, how can we get all our cronies in the same room at the same parties Everybody makes money how they always used to, but now we're going to use the crypto space. And if you ask me, there's been just so much ridiculous overstep and not being willing to be upfront about the information. Like this Hinman stuff, th literally, we all know that he said that Ethereum and Bitcoin are not securities, and we know that that's there. They just don't want to be able to actually show that in open court. Why? Because they don't want them to be able to compare that to XRP and then XRP make the leap that, hey, well, we're not a security either. And so at the end of the day, yeah, they're literally just using the SEC to slow down the process because what are they doing right now? They're dragging their feet. I know court takes a long time, but I think that most of this has probably been a little more straightforward than it looks right now. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the day when we can have, like you said, some oversight. I think that some is definitely uh, appropriate and we can get some clarity 
but absolutely abuse of power for sure. I'm not down with what the SEC is doing, and I'm I'm rooting for uh, XRP fam. Put them up. Let's get it. Because a lot of people hear what's going on, like, well, what can I do? Get your behind off the internet and start and fill this form out. But, but what the DCA has done, DCTA has done, um, they've created it. I didn't because I'm just a mouthpiece. I'm a shock jock. That's what I do. But um, this is exactly what they've done. And this is what the form looks like. They have These guys have created a form for you. So you go to this little link over here. I'm going to go put it in the chat for you in a moment. But stop the SEC's attack on crypto. You guys can go ahead, check this out yourself, do your due diligence before you um, use it. But step one, contact your representatives via phone or email. Be sure to change your name, city, blah, blah, blah. But it basically tells you what what to say to them it's a prompt so they're doing this for you so all you literally have to do is you can write or you can call and it's there this is free if you want to help us go ahead and fill this out it goes a long way if you want to volunteer for the dcta contact them we need help if you want to donate great but this is a very important initiative i'm just really irritated because what happened yesterday and that's part of why i was so pissed off yesterday was because um voyager the voyager bankruptcy chapter 11 you know that all these companies are in chapter 11 right now it's crazy binance us won the bid to buy them and the deal was going to go through and the sec stepped in and said no no you can't buy because we have to investigate to see whether vgx the native token is a security or not and that's unfortunate because these people are going to get back, I think, 50 to 70 percent of their crypto assets they had, which I'm a Voyager creditor as well. Celsius creditor, no to the clawbacks are absolutely ridiculous and predatory. It's going to further destroy the industry. Head over to BitBoy Cryptos to learn more about it. He put out a really good um, video on that. Um, also, too, they need to figure out what they're going to do with the Celsius distribution as well as far as the native token and with the loans, all that stuff. It's a big mess. But basically, the SEC stepped in and said, nope. This sale can't go through, so all the Voyager creditors are going to have to wait even longer. And the terrible thing about it is we have to pay taxes on the yield that we earned, the, the rewards, the yield and stuff. So we have to pay for those, and then we get to write it off as a loss later on. So I've already paid my taxes for everything that I've you know withdrawn or the yield for like all the different platforms I was on. And I had a pretty hefty tax bill this year and last year. So I might have to go back and fix that. And I don't know how that's going to work, but it's going to be an absolute mess. And the terrible thing about it is at least I, from what I heard from my previous CPA is you can put out an extension to whether you pay or not, but you're still charged interest on that. So the longer these court cases yep. get dragged out, the longer these court cases get dragged out, it's just hurting retail. So the SEC is actually doing the, the damn opposite of protecting retail and helping our pocketbooks. Like everybody's hurting right now. I think there's probably like over a million people impacted on this. I just, I, I just want to, I want to continue to see good stuff happen for the industry because really at this point, it's just, I feel like just we're under attack and I get it. Like there's been bad actors. People have done bad things, but realistically at the same time, I feel like we do have an opportunity to do really, really amazing things and really benefit um, the entire world and have America back as the, you know, number one again, which people like to argue if America is ever number one again or in the past. I don't, I personally don't care. I just want to see the quality of people's lives improve. I'm just sick of all these, this fussing and this fighting and all this BS. It just makes me so terribly mad they're stifling innovation too wendy you know think about it because there's no clarity in the space there there's definitely definitely money that would pour into to certain types of projects and assets and causes and things that could be growing but people are saying wait a minute i'm not going to toss all my money into that i don't even know if i'm going to be able to present that to the public and so it's just it doesn't make sense they're going the to other countries there some bitcoiners yep. are going to el salvador yep. folks are going to puerto rico people are going to hong kong southeast asia Dubai mm -hmm. um you know and something that I'm looking into too is getting out because they wanted somebody said there was something that they wanted to ban stable coins in the United States like we do sponsorships on the show like disclose sponsorships at times so if we do those we like to take stable coins because yeah. it's not a conflict of interest or anything or if I do consulting I like to take stable coins you know I do trading I like to convert my my uh my whole my my trading profits when there is any into you know stable coins like that's what I like to do. And I can't operate a business here. And it's just kind of silly at this point. But but you guys, um, Crypto Domus yesterday talked about a drop. Um, I talked about a drop. We're losing the support here at about 23.2. So you can probably anticipate us going back down to about 21.5. We talked about this on the show. I talked about it last week. I posted it on Twitter. Um, things are not looking really good at the moment. Everything looks kind of bearish. Unless we're able to kind of sustain this area and get that solid bounce above 23.5 and kind of reclaim the $24,000 area, I think we're going to go down. This trade was invalidated. Um, we did, we, we fell down, like I said. We popped back up, consolidated. We weren't able to.
able to flip above 25 and then we broke back down. So that trade was invalidated. If you were able to scalp some of this, congratulations. If not, that's fine too. Um, but Scott, do you, th- I've got a Scott, do you think that we're still in a bear market? Cause I, again, you guys, I'm very, I'm still thinking that we're going to get a really gnarly drop. We had crypto Domus come out and he gave us some key important dates. I'm going to read those dates to you again because he uses Astro TA. He said, it's going to be crazy between March 6th and March 16th. Pluto is going to be out there between March 3rd and the and the 22nd. That generally indicates a really gnarly drop. And then he said, April 19th, there's going to be ugly eclipse that could lead to some more disgusting downside movement. These are predictions for quarter two of 2023. Macroeconomically have what I believe is going to happen and continue to just press downward. And I think it's should some sort of an event happen, no matter what it is, which I think we're going to have, I think we're going to have another opportunity to buy pretty low. When do you think we're going to be able to, we got an opportunity around 10 K. Um, I, I had bid set all the way down to $9,500 and I had to take my capital off of the exchange that I was using, um, yeah. because I'm not, I'm not interested in playing games like that. Like I'm not, I'm not interested in losing over six figures because of my pride. So I have alert set to where price starts to get down to some of yeah. those areas. And again, it's from like, it's lower. It's a, cause I was buying the dip there what, like under 30,000, I had limits set because I use limit orders. I'm not a big dollar cost average person. Um, but if we get under 15,000, then I will start, I'll redeploy that capital, hopefully using the Syscoin yeah. wallet. XRP community lawyer, John E. Deaton referred to Alderovi's statement. Particularly noteworthy is the last sentence in which Deaton states that the summary judgment brief could already be a preliminary to an appeal brief. I have no doubt Ripple will win and the current Supreme Court will shut down the SEC's gross overreach. The West Virginia of his EPA case is all you need to read to agree with me. Ripple's summary judgment brief is already an extremely well-written appellate brief. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.